Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Today I'm going live to discuss the importance of early intervention. Now, yesterday I spoke about how we can screen children uh, to identify risk in reading and mathematics. And the reason why we want to do a universal screening of all our students in those early years of uh, primary school are because we can identify risk. We can identify the weaknesses that they currently have that put them at risk for struggling to learn how to read and learn uh, different mathematics um, concepts. And with this information, we can then inform our instruction and use it to inform what we're gonna use as whole class instruction, as small group instruction, and as one-on-one -on -one individual instruction. So this information is as important to parents as it is to teachers because they can also learn the different areas that they can try and help focus on with their child at home. So this might include uh, playing with different word games with nursery rhymes, doing more uh, reading at home, talking about how you can pay attention to the sounds, coming up with words speaking with the same first sound or the same last sound. These are all activities that we can do at home with our children to help make the transition of learning how to become a reader better. There are similar things that we can do for math, like teaching them about patterns and working on their counting, the, um, making sure that they have that one-to-one -one correspondence, which is the ability to have one number represent one object when you're counting. These are all things that if we intervene early, we can have a huge impact. And that's not just an impact for our students, who are at risk for developing a learning disability. These are also our underprivileged children that come from more diverse backgrounds that don't necessarily have that same support going uh, into school. They may not have had the ability to attend preschool. They may not have had that language rich environment at home in English. They may be English language learners where their parents don't speak English or are still learning English themselves. So we need to see what we can do from the beginning to help these students succeed. And this is something that research has shown that we can do quite successfully and have an, a big impact reducing the problems with reading uh, from a very young age and lessening the severity of learning disabilities in those students that are at risk for developing them. One of the huge, or one of the big areas for students with dyslexia is struggling with an awareness of the sounds within the language. Now these are called um, sorry, this is called phonological awareness, and the smallest unit is the phoneme, and those are the individual speech sounds. The thing with the English language is the spoken language was around for thousands of years before written language was created, and English is an alphabetic language where our letters represent sounds of speech. Now, there isn't a perfect relationship between the speech sounds in English and the number of letters in our alphabet. There are roughly 44 speech sounds, depending on the dialect of English that you speak and your location, but our alphabet only has 26 letters. So that means that we need to teach these relationships, but we also need to make sure that First, the children can hear the difference between the different speech sounds. And this isn't necessarily a pro, this isn't something that's going to be caused from hearing loss. This is their ability to attend to the individual sounds that are similar. And 
in some languages, they would, the two pronunciations of a, a phoneme may be considered the same sound. So in uh, children who are ESL, or English as additional language, their first language may have sounds that are considered the same. And this is where we get to the accents and the problems with pronunciation. So if we take that time to focus and really work on that phonological awareness of the young children, this is something that we can start working on with our preschoolers and incorporate into our language instruction and our word games and while we're reading stories, you know, drawing kids' attention to the sounds within the language, that's gonna have a huge help. And that other area that is important that we address is vocabulary. Not everybody has the same experience to vocabulary at home, just because of different educational letters, or sorry, at educational levels, and patterns of speech that are used within the home. Spoken conversation has very poor grammatical structure. And the best way for children to learn more about how we are supposed to be speaking with the right syntax, that really comes from their exposure to written language or formal conversations. And they get this by hearing books read to them. And that's where they hear a much broader vocabulary. And it's a great way for them to learn new words. Now, if you're working with students that are from um, homes that don't have English as their first language, then they're not gonna have the same vocabulary exposure. So it's important that us as educators takes the time and makes a conscious effort about choosing the words that we're speaking to them. This is gonna help boost their vocabulary just simply through the exposure to the words. And if we focus on this early intervention, it means that they're gonna be more prepared for reading instruction in the future. So, you know, what I think it's really important for all educators to do is take a moment and learn the essential components related to reading and to mathematics and figure out what those core skills are so that they can be sure to include um, instruction in those areas even from the beginning and mention these things in passing so that we can prepare children for when they're gonna have that formal instruction. Now, as I said before, there have been numerous research studies that look at these early interventions and they've had huge success rates because it prevents the child from falling behind or it means that they don't fall behind as much. And the problem with reading is that there's a Matthew effect. And by that, I mean the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. With reading, it's the kids who read, read more. And the kids that struggle with the reading or can't read are reading less. The problem with this is the number of words they're gonna be exposed to. Um, once students hit about grade four, they're learning about three to 4,000 new words every year just through their reading and exposure to the classroom. Now, if you have a student that's not reading at grade level, struggles to read and is not reading the same texts as their peers, they're not gonna have the same exposure to this rich vocabulary and these new concepts. They're also not gonna have the same amount of practice reading. So, as students who are good at reading, read those little bit harder and more challenging books. They're getting better and better at reading because practice really does make perfect, uh, or not perfect, but it, it betters your skill. Whereas the students who struggle with reading or can't read, avoid it at all costs. So when they're at home, they're not picking up the books around and trying to read it. They're doing other activities. They're not ex 
getting that exposure. The parents may not have the resources or the information on how they can support their child's reading development at home. So these kids are getting less exposure to text, less exposure to vocabulary that they get through reading texts. So we need to make sure that we can do our best to help catch these children up as soon as possible so they can get those foundational, the foundational skills to succeed in reading. And this is gonna help them all throughout their schooling and life because reading is a everyday factor. And, you know, as individuals in a technologically rich society, you don't necessarily realize how much reading actually occurs on a daily basis because you have all these images. But still, if you struggle with reading or you can't read, it's very, very apparent. So we need to do more at the beginning where it's easier and we haven't had the damage caused by not learning how to read with their peers to help intervene and make sure these students and these children have access to reading. Uh, there was a report last week, I believe it was in the Globe and Mail, talking about how by third grade, one quarter of Canadian students can't read at an acceptable level. The problem with that is as soon as they hit those intermediate grades, their grade four, instruction shifts from learning how to read to reading to learn. So if we don't catch these students in those primary grades, the chances of them getting the instruction once they hit about grade four and are learning to read really decreases. There's also research showing that early intervention is the most effective and efficient interventions. So an intervention that would take, you know, 20 hours in kindergarten or 10 hours in kindergarten would take four times as long in grade four for that student to get the same benefit from the program if they are able to. So we really need to make the change for the better for our students and for society. We will all benefit from a more literate society. So I hope you learned a little bit more about the importance of early intervention and please feel free to reach out, reach out to more, me if you'd like more information about this. I hope you are having a great day and I look forward to talking to you next week.